two men journey to the bars and restaurants of Scandinavia to find amazing beers, always with the same question. Hey, what's on tap? It's time to find out. What's on tap podcast? Once again, filling your ear holes with beery goodness. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, So today we have some hoppy beers. We do. I hope so, at least. Potentially hoppy beers. Looking forward to these two. I gotta, I gotta tell you. Um, so, how you been, man? How's uh, social distancing working for you? Uh, I'm at a, an appropriate distance from you at this moment. That's right. No, it's it's a uh, it's a bummer. It's it sucks. The corona yeah. sucks. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I have to say, life in Sweden hasn't really been so dramatically different from before. It's just like, everything's just a little bit slower. Everything's just a little more calm, I guess. There's less people on the streets, uh, less people out and about. But, I mean, it doesn't really feel so different. Like, but we've seen it in a lot of other countries where it's been really, really bad. Yes, this is true. But it also depends on your own... Um uh, how you how you approach the corona because i i take the the isolation quite seriously i go out for very few purposes and yes. this to to uh, to sit away from you uh, and talk about beer is one of the few reasons why i leave my house uh, yeah. where i see a lot of people are just going out partying heavily touching other people Ugh. hanging out in in uh, crammed uh, pubs and uh, uh, clubs and basically not caring at all so so, so yes society hasn't aff- been affected much because no one cares about other people's lives well i mean i didn't go do that much to begin with so no. <laughs> you know, it hasn't really you know, changed that much in my life uh, staying home drinking beer and watching movies is <laughs> pretty much what i was doing before coronavirus so this is just makes me now a hero because i'm Doing it for the people. Yes. <laughs> I'm doing it for the betterment of society. Exactly. <laughs> not because I'm a loner isolationist with an alcohol problem. No, 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 no. Nope. No, hero sounds much better. No, no, no. Two months ago, Aww. isolationist uh, <laughs> with an alcohol problem. But uh, today, hero. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, up first, we have In Defense of Gravity, which is an IPA collab between Wylam and Sweden's own ABC Brewing. Uh, it is called, I'm oh, sorry, Apex. Yes. I don't know why I call them ABC, because they have ABC on the top. It says know. ABC. Their logo is ABC. Ah, that doesn't make sense. Why Apex it, it, Brewing Company. Oh, okay. Now it makes sense. Uh, Apex. Uh, da, 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 da. 6.7%. Um, nice. IPA. Quite hazy, quite light. Uh, light in color. Mm-hmm. Uh, pale yellow-ish. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's not much to have of an aroma, actually. It's kind of hoppy. Yeah. It's a little... But it's fun because we like both Wylam and Apex. We do. Uh, quite a bit. Um, I Apex be, has been... I might be more of an Apex fanboy than you are. I think it's only because you probably had more than me. Uh, I, I generally enjoy Apex beers I've had. Yeah. I can't say I've had anything I've really hated. Um, but they've had a lot that were kind of in the middle of the road, kind yeah. of, as well. Kind of like uh, OO Brewing's um, uh, Two Hop series. Yeah. Those are, none of them are bad, but none of them have been like, oh my God, this is amazing. Um, but yeah. So two, two great breweries uh, collaborating together to create kind of a hoppy IPA. Yeah. Yeah. Let's try Cheers. it. Cheers. Hmm. To um, to make all the drinking game listeners uh, drunk, I would say that it's very effervescent. Would you? Which is a bing. I would say so. It's uh, uh, very bubbly. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, for me, I think this is just kind of kind of boring. It's not really giving me a lot. Is it? Is it good? Yeah. Am I ever going to remember that I've had this beer? Probably not. There's a lot of like grassy notes. 
Not a lot of piney notes. No, no, I, no. I have no idea what kind of hops are in this. Galaxy. Um, Galaxy. Uh, Galaxy T90, uh, BRU1 BBC, and Simcoe Cryo. Oh, I love those T90s and BRC5943. I love the BRU1 BBC is no, my probably favorite. my favorite uh, hops. Um, yep. I got nothing to say about this beer. So this, do, we, do we know anything <laughs> about it? Was it like, was it brewed during, uh, uh, after we knew about Corona? Is it is it super fresh? Uh, I would say so. I um, I got it online just like two or three weeks ago. Yeah. So it is super fresh. It just came out um, as part of the last wave of Wildlands beers yeah. that that got released. Um, Because it, it's interesting. It's a, I, of course businesses need to keep functioning and breweries need to keep uh, pumping out beers. Mm -hmm. But collaborations, especially with uh, uh, several uh, mm -hmm. nationalities, involve travel. And some air mm -hmm. travel has been quite difficult. I assume this is done before the coronavirus uh, lockdown started. I, Because, well, I mean, the UK didn't restrict flights to and from Sweden until, uh, what is it, first week of Mar of April, I think? No. Uh, so it had to have been done, I would say probably into February first of, yeah, into February probably. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, there's no canning date. Because um, I have a follow up question. Mm -hmm. What's the what's the minimum involvement for a collaboration beer? If I you, honestly have no if idea. If you and I are brewers, yeah, and you are the head brewer, mm -hmm. what's the minimum I need to do to uh, to get my name on your can? Um, help make the recipe. If, that would be the if it's just minimum. helping making the recipe, then we don't need to travel at all. Nope. I could just email you. Exactly. We could, we could exchange emails, a couple of phone calls, maybe a video chat. Yeah. And then we would have a, a collaboration. Be, right. With a video chat, you're already many steps ahead because then yeah. I could video chat you while you are brewing the beer. Mm -hmm. Am I then? Then I'm pretty... Pretty uh, present. Well, I mean, you aren't doing the physical labor, but you are contributing in like... What about water balance? Yeah. What about the water pH? What about the when should I add this hop? When should I add this hop? You know and yeah. Um, but then like, you're not going to be there for the the canning or the exactly because yeah. that's the case with basically all collaborations. You're part yeah. of one very specific process. Process. Yeah. Probably the brewing or the uh, the brainstorming of the recipe. You know, and I got to be honest. When it comes to like collaborating, yeah, I'm really curious how much the the head brewers of these two breweries are actually doing. Yes, and how much of it is we were in the room while the people that were making it were there? Because a lot of these head brewers don't actually brew the beers anymore. Yeah. They're really just the technical advisor to the the understudies that are, are learning how to brew beer. <laughs> I completely agree. And that's the reason why I, why I bring this up, uh, kind of pressuring you to give an answer. Uh, I, In my mind, if two breweries want to uh, market something as a collaboration, mm -hmm. there's there's nothing stopping them. It, we, it, it can literally be like Apex created the recipe, gave it to Wildlands and Wildlands brewed it. Yes. That's a collaboration. It, sure. <laughs> as much as anything else. <laughs> yeah. So when it comes to collaborations, we as the consumers, maybe we just shouldn't care. Maybe yeah. we, we, we should just see our favorite brewer on it and buy it and just be happy with it. Yeah. Because there's no way for us to, to verify the amount of involvement from one or the other of these two, two brewers. Um, because I, I want to be able to Uh, to vote with my wallet and only like buy the stuff that's been <laughs> collaborated in the proper yeah. way. But I don't know what the proper way is. All right. So what do you give in defense of gravity? This is a 3.75. Yeah, I'm going to go 3.5. Uh, yeah. It's good. It's enjoyable, but it's largely forgettable. But you're right. It's not popping. Right. I mean, for again, I think this is one of the problems I've had with some other Wylam collabs where Wylam does really amazing IPAs 
and then the other brewery that they get on do amazing IPAs, and then you put them together, and you're kind of like, wow, how did neither one of you manage to create an amazing IPA? <laughs> yeah. This is one of those cases where yeah. the sum does not equal the parts. No. Nope. All right, we'll take a break, and we'll be right back. We're back. Yay. Yay. So the next beer I'm very excited about because we've had a lot of stuff from Der Molz uh in the past. Mostly stouts. <laughs> Almost entirely stouts. I think there's been... Some, some sours. Yeah, a couple of sours, but I think this might be our first IPA. It might be. And um, it is a double IPA with citrus, centennial, and mosaic. Comes in at 8%, and it's best before six months after canning, and this was canned on... Uh, March 5th. Oh, nice. Yep. And the, the, it's called Circumspect. And the uh, cover is this uh, naked guy with a fig leaf covering his genitals, um, juggling what looks to be uh, chestnuts that are on fire while standing tiptoe on a outcropping in the water. As you do. Surrounded by... Um, I can only assume are alligators and some sort of serpent. Sea, some sort of sea creatures. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's get into this. So this, while the... Much darker. Yeah. Well, the Wylam uh, Apex beer was like very, very light and kind of uh, just kind of a murky looking color. This is kind of looks like what I would call a West Coast IPA. It's very dark, um, kind of falls into more of the ambery, apricot kind of color to it. Yeah. The aroma. smell is crazy. Yeah, it's like uh, <laughs> melon, yeah. like a cantaloupe, and yeah. uh, a bit of maltiness. Yeah, I had to... I, like, I'm not sure. Like, I almost feel like there's some sort of weird residual smell from maybe the last beer I had in this glass. I know really? I rinsed it out. Because it... I'm getting kind of a candy sweetness on it. Like a candy floss kind of sweetness to it. Yeah, there's, there's definitely sweetness, yeah. maltiness. It's like a... Cotton candy kind of smell. It's. I don't think I've ever smelled that on a. IPA there's, before. there's not that much. Yeah. All right. Well, cheers. Cheers. Mmm. So much melon. Cantaloupe. Like yeah. Fresh. The, the yellow one, right? That's a cantaloupe. Um. Honey melon. No, honey melon is the yellow one. Yes. Cantaloupe is the um, is the same as a Gaia melon, which the same family as a Gaia melon. Which okay, is that, a, that doesn't say anything to me. This is honey melon. Which is um, the orange. It's got like a brownish yeah. skin with green veins going through it, and then yeah, the okay. inside is orange. Okay. That's cantaloupe. Yeah. Then I'm not. I'm not talking about cantaloupe. Yeah, you're talking, about, talking about, honey, about honeydew. Melon. Honey melon. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is. This is kind of weird. Yeah. Like, I don't think I've ever tasted an IPA that tastes quite like this before, but that's not a bad thing. <laughs> so there was, there's this German hop called, like, Huel or something. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. And it has a lot of melon. Yeah, but this, this one doesn't contain that Mm-mm. hops, but this is the flavor I identify with that hop. Um, it's a little boozy. Like, there's a little <laughs> bit of an alcoholish booziness to it. Yes. It's not, like, overpowering, but it definitely kind of... Fumes come back up through your nose a little bit, which is kind of kind of nice, actually. I mean, this, to me, falls much closer to the West Coast style. Um, yeah, sure. Than uh, the New England style, which it's is kind of the crazy. It's so sweet. It's weirdly sweet. It is weirdly sweet. sweet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, wa- water, malted barley, hops, and yeast, citrus, and tineal, and mosaic. But I like it. I do, too. I like it a lot. Um I'm having trouble putting it in a specific mm-hmm. category. Because there are these like <laughs> sugar honey notes to it. Yeah. And then there's this alcohol burn. There's, it's not, it doesn't fall into like that piney tar flavors in any way whatsoever. Like you think it would be like caramel notes and uh, like I said, pine and tar and like those kind of things. But you're yep. just... This, this is much more in the like melon, tropical fruit, uh, um, guava, those kind of kind of flavors. Um, and the smell actually lives up to its to its to its taste. 
Yeah. But the Moors Lutl have historically made quite strange beers. Mm-hmm. A lot of their stouts have been quite strange. Yeah. Uh, in a quite refreshing way. They, they go outside of the mode more than most. Oh, yeah. Their Smorley is a, a really good series. And the uh, Octane Overlord series Smorley, is actually... Mo- motor Oil. Motor no. Oil, yeah. No, no, the the smoly smear is... olia, oh, right, right, yeah, right, yeah. right, right. That's like the they have both smear olia and yeah, motor yeah. olia. Yeah, yeah, motor olia is like uh, uh, more of your straight yes um, stouts. And smear olia is for those, thicker. It's thicker, and it's usually like Mexican stout yeah. or coffee, chocolate, something or another, coconut craziness. Yeah, yeah. Those are a lot of fun. Yeah, those are really good. Um, I might actually give this a 4.25. I'm going to give it a 4.25 for yeah. sure. I really, really like this. I started I, on a 4, but the weirdness is appealing to me. What's so weird is the weirdness works. Because so often, uh, when you get these kind of melon flavors in an IPA, it just tastes like, for me, spoiled trash. Yeah. <laughs> or uh, like an, it's, it's like a really off, like rotten fruit kind You're of. You're talking about guava now. Right, right. These kind of rotten fruit flavors that you get sometimes and this doesn't doesn't have that at all it's bright it's fresh it's and if anyone at home is keeping tabs on the what's on tap drinking game whenever stefan doesn't like guava that's you you need to (laughs) you need to drink Uh, 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 that's a moment to drink i hate guava yeah we know that's (laughs) bing yeah when you hear this uh, uh, note drink (laughs) bing all right, so 45, 45, both really loving this beer. Yeah. Um, such a surprise. Did not expect to enjoy this and to have this experience. No, so now what we now know is we need to find more of the Merslutl's non-stout beers yeah. and drink them. For sure. We yeah. need to drink everything. And this, and this might be the first, like I said, IP I've actually seen on the web shops. Uh, yeah. to even get so when I saw it I was like oh that looks like fun and I didn't see you had it uh, checked in or exactly. anything so I uh, was like I will grab that for sure are you keeping track of all beers we've had on the show um I mean not really but no. I know like what we've had me neither but I'm guessing so we've we've said in the past that we are Wylam fanboys yeah but we have reviewed a lot of the most little beers. I know, I know. The most little, um, like, so if I just like to, to rank our breweries, and we've, we've probably, Omnipolo, too old, for, I mean, too old is probably uh, number yeah, one. Yeah. Omnipolo is probably number two. The most little's, I would guess, three or four. Um, yeah. Wylam's is high up. Wylam, uh, I'm trying to think if there's another one that we just, like, keep hitting over and over again. We have um, reviewed a lot of Mikeller. Yeah, I guess... McKellar's pretty pretty. Uh, oh, uh, Evil Twin, New York. Yes. So if I had to put together like a top five list, I would say those are probably <laughs> the five or six that that we've done the most of. I remember this is a long time ago now. I was just getting into. I, I might have not be um, might not have become co-host yet, but I bought two Demors Little coffee beers made with different coffee. Yeah. That's a long time ago now. Those might have been the first the most little beers I drank with you. We tried. Did we try both of those at the same time? We had. Or two, did we try? We definitely had two coffee beers in one episode. Yeah. Then it was those two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was. Yeah, that was. I guess a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> We've had a lot of beers. More. A lot of the most little since then. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it. This one is good. Yeah. I would recommend this one to people. Yep. All right. So in defense of gravity and circumspect. Yeah. Um. Good choices, man. So you can find us online at what's on tappodcast.com, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Spotify. We are Pod Syndicate. Twitter? No. We're not on Twitter. Fuck Twitter. Why? Well, we're not a porn star, first of all. Is Twitter only for porn stars? Uh I, I guess so. I learned so much. I learned so <laughs> much. Well, and the, 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 the only, only people I can figure are um uh, politicians, porn stars, and uh actors. Or ah. sports, sports people. Some people that have something they're trying to sell to get people to invest in oh, wow. uh, are really the only only things I've seen people really 
Okay. Yeah. And then um, you can find us on GeoCities. Yep. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, Ask Jeeves. If you do a search on Ask Jeeves, <laughs> yes. it'll pull us up. Alta um, Vista. Oh, yeah. Alta yeah. Vista for sure. That is really the way to go. Um, We're big on Google. <laughs> If you haven't been to our MySpace page and look at our top ten, um, I think you'll you'll find quite you'll, surprising. And I hope be, you enjoy the. Uh, you'll be amazed. I hope you enjoy the music that goes along yeah. with that, and the and the way that the beer glass follows your cursor as you move it around. Oh, that's the best. That's going to be so much. That's so much fun. <laughs> I spent a lot of time on that page. I'm I'm really glad. I think it's well worth the time and energy we spent on our MySpace page. Oh, definitely. It's only going to pay off. Yeah, we paid an advertising firm. Uh, uh, an unholy amount of money to pimp our MySpace page. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So until next time. This podcast is part of the Pod Syndicate family. For more criminally compelling shows, articles, and conversations, head to wearepodsyndicate.com. <laughs>